I'm here in Las Vegas at Health 2023, where over 10,000 attendees from senior executives, decision makers, and innovators across healthcare come together to accelerate business outcomes, stay ahead of emerging trends, connect with the industry, advance their career, or all of the above. I'm not the only Aussie here in Vegas, though. Thanks to the team at Lens Health, who've led the Australian delegation, and behind me are a bunch of quality Australian health tech companies keen to share the work they're doing with the US market. In this episode, you'll hear from those companies on the Australian delegation at Health, the lessons they've learnt and the problems they're solving. You'll also hear from CEO of Ant Health, Bronwyn LeGrice, with some valuable insights for Australian health tech companies entering the US market. Collaboration starts with a conversation, Team Health Tech. Well, let's make it happen. Welcome to Talking Health Tech, featuring content and community about technology and healthcare. We acknowledge the traditional owners of lands these conversations were recorded and pay respect to elders past and present. I'm Bron LeGras, CEO of And Health. Bron, we're in the Australian Pavilion at Health and we've got a lot of conversations happening around us with a delegate organisation. How's it been the last couple of days? Oh, look, this is just such an amazing conference. If you want to really get a sense of the breadth and the depth and the complexity of the US healthcare system. So it's a really amazing conference from a content perspective, but also just wandering the halls and seeing what other companies are in your space or are doing similar things or potential partners that you can work with. And why has it been so important for all these Australian companies to come across the world to attend health to have these conversations? Well, I think everyone knows that um, investors in Australia look for companies who can go into international markets. And I think, especially following COVID, it is really important to have personal connections and you can build out those connections on Zoom when you get home. But also I think it's important just to see and remind ourselves of, of the size and the scale of the US healthcare system. And I think I said before, complexity of the US healthcare system and find people who have done it before. So the best people to learn from are people who have walked that path yes. ahead of you. And, and they already have all the scars and the open wounds yeah. from experiencing those things. Go find those people and learn from them. And I think that's what's really cool to see the Australian companies doing, really engaging with not just other companies, but service providers and bankers and investors who are all here looking for the best technology on the planet. Mm. And yeah, really cool to see the Australian companies are definitely holding their own. And I found also the other way around to a lot of organisations wanting to enter Australia. And I think you made a point in one of the sessions earlier on in the day that uh, Australia might not necessarily always just be as simple as take, you know, a test bed in Australia and just pick it up and go somewhere else, right? So coming back the other way is important too. Yeah, look, it's really important that Australia also looks for the best technology possible for our patients. We have many health challenges mm. in Australia, especially in our regional and remote populations. So companies coming to Australia often, I think, um, think of us as a single payer market, really analogous to the NHS in the UK, but it is a more complex market. And so for other companies looking to enter Australia or partner with Australian companies, it's really important that they understand that our healthcare system may not be as simple as they may have assumed it was. Yes. As we wind out day three from health, what are you hoping that the companies that are part of the Australian delegation will take away from health today? Sure. So we have a, a thing in Ant Health which is all about know what you don't know. And I really think that a, a lot of the Australians have come here with that really openness to learning perspective. So I think there's a lot of people going, going home with new learnings and, and maybe a little bit of mind blowing, yeah. but also really just going home with that sense of there is a place you can come and learn about health transformation. There is a place that you can come to pitch health. We have been, we were the first international delegation at health. We're still, we're probably the largest still this year. Um, and this is probably the best conference we've ever found in terms of really getting into the nuts and bolts of health transformation, both digital connected and also, you know, there's still a few pharmaceutical companies and other types of health technology here really looking to these conferences where you can have that intense experience and go really hard and make those connections. Yes. Uh, so we'd love to see even more Australians along next year. Hi, I'm Helen Suris. I'm the CEO for Cardihab. So then uh, what types of conversations are you having here at Health? It's been awesome because we've had a lot of meetings we've booked before we came to Health. And then there's a whole heap of things that we've just had spontaneous connections with people as you're standing in a queue for a coffee, or as you're standing in a queue for lunch. Uh, they've all been amazing meetings, um, really interesting entrepreneurs, really large multinationals, really large health services providers here. So it's a really mixed group of people. 
and really interesting stories every time you speak to someone. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think the biggest problems you'll be able to solve for these US delegates here at Health? I think we have a unique product uh, that has comparable um, aspects to it to other services we've seen here, other digital therapeutics, but they don't have the full wraparound that we do. So we're looking at this as a, an ability to group our product or match our product as a, as a wraparound for some of these other services. Um, we do have something that enters a different part of the patient journey to what we've seen here at Health. Yeah. And I think that's where we just have to recognise what we bring that's unique Basically. and how we bring those other partners together. And lastly, is there a key takeaway that you'll be um, bringing back to Australia after spending a few days here in Las Vegas? I think the most interesting thing for us is that we often get asked in Australia, if you don't know the business model inside and out, and if you haven't worked out your route to funding, then you won't be able to enter the US. But we hear a lot of companies here who still haven't worked it out either. So the expectation that Australia will know what to do when they land is quite a false expectation because a lot of the US companies are still working it out too. So there's a lot more similarities in the US than what we see in Australia and what we thought before we came here. G'day, uh, Peter Vereens, um, and I'm from uh, Neutromics, uh, co-founder, CEO, um, and here at Health in Las Vegas. And uh, what are the types of conversations you've been having with delegates here at the event over the last couple of days? We've been having a lot of investor meetings because we've just opened our Series A round. Um, so that's been the, the main source of interest. Uh, but also just, just uh, a lot of uh, strategics uh, popping by and, and finding out about the tech and they're, they all, they're all very interested, yeah. And uh, Neutromics, what do you feel is one of the biggest problems that you can solve for attendees or, uh, of health or, or their, for, for their organisations? Yeah, so our technology, it's a, it's a patch. It can monitor any diagnostic target uh, continuously in real time. And the problem is uh, that we're solving at, at the fundamental level is that uh, clinicians get very little data to make clinical decisions. So um, lab diagnostics today provides a single data point of where a patient was several hours ago. So everyone's had the experience, they've had a, their blood drawn, goes to the lab, and then hours or sometimes even days later, the doctor gets a result and it's a single data point. And for a lot of diagnostic targets that move rapidly, mm. you can imagine you know, one single data point from hours ago doesn't tell them if it's trending up, flat, down, very little data. But 70% of all clinical decisions are made using that limited data. So this device um, measures diagnostic targets continuously in real time. So the doctor can walk up to a patient and at any uh, point in time, they'll know exactly where it's trending. And that's critically important to make to making better uh, dosing decisions. And that could be for like therapeutic drug monitoring, yeah, uh, like for antibiotics, for example, or diagnosing disease states earlier. Um, so it can really revolutionize uh, diagnostics. And so that's where a lot of the interest has come from. Yeah. And we can do that almost seamlessly. Like it's a, it's a very low cognitive load for the, for the doctors. And lastly, what's the biggest takeaway that you have from uh, as we near out day three of health today? Uh, well, I suppose that a segueing onto the, that last comment I just made is um, there's been a few talks uh, about the load that that uh, people in the medical industry are under. Mm. That's been quite surprising. I know Amandeep um, did a, a LinkedIn post just recently talking about it, and. Uh, and so we really, um, yeah, in the medtech industry, you have to be really thoughtful about not providing information for information's sake, because that, that adds to the load. Yes. So we need to solve problems. And one of those problems is pulling out complexity and making um, workflows simpler. And, and that's something we really focus on. How do we make it simpler, give insights that improve patient outcomes? Yes. Um, and, and I think that's, that's one of the takeaways that I've, that, you know, from, from today. Hi everyone, I'm Nish. Uh, I'm a surgical doctor from Australia, the co-founder of Vantari, which is virtual reality training for healthcare. Think of us like a flight simulator for healthcare. We help doctors practice procedures safely in virtual reality before doing it on real patients. Love it, and give us a flavor for the conversations you've been having with uh, the attendees here at Health in Vegas. Super excited to be at Health, it's our first time 
looking for partners and investors. So I think it's been great for three days. Just getting our name out there. We launched in the US about a year ago. Our mission is to help eliminate medical error, improve patient outcomes. So it's nice to meet with healthcare systems that are looking for similar goals in terms of reducing resources for training, making it more sustainable and scalable. And then from an investment front, because we've got a team of 20 plus and growing, our next series A is in the US. So just meeting with investors, planting those seeds to help grow our ecosystem of training. Yeah. And you kind of just touched on it then in terms of the problems that you're solving for these, um, for organizations. But, um, you know, the types of people, because I've seen lots of activity over here at the Vantari booth and putting the headset on and everything. <laughs> and so who, who's the, the, the main, I, I guess, avatars, the people that you're speaking to and what do they need? What have you taken from those conversations and learned from those conversations? Uh, it's really good to see the insights that are coming out of here because the people we deal with are clinicians or healthcare execs that are trying to implement it for their system. Mm. So from a clinician perspective, they're looking at how they can train better, more sustainably, don't have to attend wait workshops, don't have to wait two years to, to de-skill and then worry about it. They can jump into our platform, perform the procedure and get their proficiency up. The healthcare execs are looking at a way that they can move away from operational costs such as cadavers, mannequins, uh, equipment packs. Mm. And then how do we train clinicians and large workforces because they're all dealing with burnout. They're all dealing with complications on a daily basis because they haven't been trained properly. So I think the US ecosystem is quite fragmented. It's very different to the Australian healthcare system. So to deal with it on a statewide rollout or hospital-wide rollout is really nice here because we can get in front of the right people. Mm. Yeah. And lastly, for you, what are, what are some of the key takeaways or things you might be implementing or lessons that you've learned from the last couple of days? Yeah, I think it's nice to be part of this larger Australian delegation coming here because otherwise had we not, we might not give them, give them the same exposure. So I think it's a nice opportunity for us. Mm. Things we've learned is, one, I think if you're coming to health, really spend the time getting your list, targeting the right people, booking as many meetings because there's a lot of people here. Mm. You don't have the time to expose yourself to absolutely everyone. And there's probably, you, you might be talking to the wrong people as well. So just making sure you have a very focused strategy on how you're going to get in front of people is important. It's four days of fun, but also mayhem. So <laughs> make sure it's organized mayhem, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm John Kelly. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Atomo Diagnostics. Excellent. Tell us a, a real quick um, a couple of sentences about what Atomo does. Yeah, we're an integrator of uh, diagnostic solutions and we provide unique consumer focused solutions for blood testing uh, in pharmacy, retail, doctor office, and increasingly online. And give us a bit of a flavor for the types of conversations you've been having with delegates here at Health over the last couple of days. Yeah, we came to, to Health specifically to try and move beyond just conversations with diagnostics companies. So we were looking to really see the broader ecosystem, uh, go direct to the pharmacy retail players, also understand how uh, digital health is impacting consumer health delivery, because that's, I think, part of the bigger picture that we want to be be start participating in. Yeah. And what are some of those, you know, tricky problems that you're learning about that really need to be solved, particularly for the US market, uh, and how Atoma might be able to help with that? Yeah, so we've got a pretty unique consumer self-test device that's approved in Australia, the only HIV self-test on the market there, and launched in Europe. Uh, we're looking to launch it in the US. The US hasn't to date approved blood-based testing in the home for infectious diseases. Uh, we've got some solutions that really open up that market and we're trying to find some partners that can see that opportunity and want to help make it make it happen for yeah. us. Yeah, Love it. And lastly, uh, what are some of the biggest takeaways that you'll be chucking in the suitcase when you come back to, to come back to Australia and, and perhaps implementing your day to day? Yeah, I think, you know, coming from originally Europe and then living in Australia, I think the complexity of the system here has been surprising. I knew it, but I didn't see it firsthand. You know, the amount of different payers, the amount of different providers of health at the various state, federal and private levels. So I think really navigating who your channel partners are is it takes some unpacking. Yes. And, and I suppose that level of complexity is not not easily understood unless you're here and start to have those conversations. I'm Jill Frayne. I'm the Deputy Chief Scientist at CSIRO, Australia's National Science Agency. Thanks, Jill. And give us a flavour for the types of conversations you've been having with delegates here at Health over the last couple of days. So, CSIRO, obviously, we're focused on innovation and what's coming next. So, we've been trying to seek out really good companies that are trying to push the boundaries and, and the cutting edge. So, it's a bit of a mix. 
here, more about those that, that have established products and those that are really trying to push. So we've had a great conversation with a quantum company earlier that are really trying to look at quantum health implementation. Yes. Um, and so it's a future thing. And so we spent a lot of time with them. That was great. Um, also talking um, with the ARPA people around big challenges around health. And so Cyro is a mission-oriented organization. And we, we really excel when we can bring together consortiums of scientists, industry, and others to deliver on kind of mission-based challenges. Yeah. Now, there's a good fit there, too, in terms of, you know, that future focus and, and also the, the work that, that CSIRO, CSIRO do. In terms of the, the, the problems to be solved or the challenges that people are facing, are you getting a bit of a sense of what those are in some of these conversations with a lot of people that are based here in the U.S.? I think there's obviously a lot of conversation around AI, um, huge at the moment, um, and there's always been a strong AI conversation in, in health is where it's been. There's a, a big focus on LLMs, and so interesting to see is particularly big pharma companies where they're putting their, their LLM capability to change how they do business, but also to try and push forward some of how they do their science. And so it's a really interesting emerging area and how you can use more of that and where, what that blend of different forms of AI will be and yeah. then quantum in the future. So that's really that one. And lastly, what's something that you've learned from the last couple of days and will bring back to Australia and, and uh, implement in your day to day? I think the competition is fierce. There's a huge number of really great companies with really great ideas and solutions. Some of them are standalone. How do you bring that into the bigger picture? So how do you bring, bring more technology rather than a single solutions? I and mean, then differentiate the capability and, and capacity. Those that are on the bleeding edge need to stay there and need to keep driving that. And that, as a research organization, that's really what we want to do. We want to partner with those that are thinking ahead and that were thinking about LLMs four or five years ago, not playing catch up now. And we want to work with those about, about the future and what's coming next. I'm Edwina Wenkad. I'm the CEO of PenCS. Excellent. Okay. I am Ken Sing Lim. I'm Chief Medical Advisor to PenCS. Thanks, guys. And uh, tell us a little bit more about PenCS and the problems that um, it, it solves, particularly for a US audience that are attending health over the last couple of days. So Pen is a patient to population health informatics platform. And in the US, one of the biggest challenges is actually how do we action data? So with our platform, they have the ability to not only access structured data, but to then action that data. Yes. And I'd love to get a bit of a flavour from both of you about the um, uh, types of conversations you've been having with delegates over the last couple of days and some of the, the things that they've presented to you in terms of the problems that might need solving. So it's really interesting because a lot of the products here actually deal with very specific areas. So um, it's perhaps indicative of the market and that there seems to be fragmentation of data, fragmentation of care services. And, you know, it's we've got some of those same issues in Australia. So I think some of our solutions do have an application here as well. Um, but also, if you like, that's the challenge in a fragmented market. Yeah, there's two main streams of conversation, I think, that I've been experiencing. Um, one is very much around data and uh, the, the collection of data, the transformation of data, the quality of data, and um, the aggregation of that data. And then the second is really about impact uh, at point of care. So how are we supporting providers? How do we action that data? And, you know, what do we need to do to pivot behaviour. So they're having the same challenges with behaviour, with patient activation, with provider activation. And it's really a two-piece conversation because we need to look at evidence-based insights, which then enable data action. Yeah. And lastly, then what about for yourselves? Like those, uh, any actionable insights or lessons that you'll be bringing back to your day-to-day -to, -day to Australia after the, the conference? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think one of the things that's really been amplified here, which we know anyway from Australia, but it's, you know, it's end-to-end. -end. And when I say end-to-end, -end, we have to go to the consumers. You know, the consumers need to be empowered. I know myself as an individual, like I want access to my healthcare data. I want to know how to use my data to enable longevity for myself, for my family, for my friends. And so as an organisation at Penn, we're also looking at how do we apply that and that thing into our solutions, into the technology that we're building, and then how do we use that to support population health outcomes? Hi, I'm Francis, I'm from Ethereum, and we're a Melbourne-based company, and we're globally expanding to primarily the US market right now, and we work in digital health, and particularly the problem we're solving is uh, adherence to medications in asthma, COPD, and large world diseases. In fact, COPD is the world's third largest killer. And although medicines are very effective, 
people unfortunately fail to take them or when they try to take them, they can't use the inhaler properly. So 90% of patients actually do not get the benefit of their medicine. And tell me a little bit more about the types of conversations you've been having with delegates here at the Australian Pavilion at Health over the last couple of days. So it's been exciting. We've had a very wide range of people coming by, from medical directors through to clinical people to technology partners. So we were just having lunch with a very large technology provider in the US who's, you know, should they partner with us, they could, you know, turbocharge our expansion. So some really major uh, discussions and a lot of smaller ones too. So yeah. really great. And you spoke about some of those problems before uh, in terms of that uh, you're solving with the solution on a global scale. Uh, are there particular problems that you've seen um, particularly highlighted in those discussions that you've had with delegates uh, here in the US over the last couple of days? Yeah, I think the unique thing about the US is they've actually got reimbursement um, money mm. for remote patient monitoring. And what that means is that we can sell our technology to healthcare providers. They can then use it and get paid themselves. So there's a circle of funding, uh, whereas most places in the world, that circle is actually not a circle. And so it's very difficult to deploy digital health solutions because they are actually seen as a cost plus mm. because people aren't necessarily looking at the, the savings. That, you know, some of our clinical studies show reductions in hospitalizations of up to 80%. Now that's huge savings, but sometimes people can pay up front for that, right? So systems, even in Australia, the UK, they're kind of reluctant just to pay that extra to make that saving. Yes. Because it's not immediate, it's stand the line. Yeah. And lastly, um, for yourself, some of those lessons, I think you've already touched on some of those just throughout this conversation, but if there were some key lessons and um, you know nuggets you'll be taking back to Australia after the last couple of days here at Health, what would they be? I think the US market is wide open. There's uh, very much a can-do attitude. There's also a, an increasing focus on healthcare disparities. And in respiratory, the diseases we serve, they really speak to that, right? So deprived areas and health inequalities really is part of the diseases that we we uh, have solutions for. And there's a very much, uh, you know, an appetite to solve that problem. And which is very encouraging because, you know, typically people see, oh, US is all about money. But actually it's not. It's like there's, there's a lot of caring people here trying to make a difference for patients that have you know, struggles and COPD is no, you know, and asthma, they're, they're, they're killers, you know, they're not funny. People sometimes dismiss them as, you know, diseases that are not that important, but actually they're of massive costs and they're massive impact to families. So, yeah, the, 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 you know, it's a great place to do business, really is. I'm Scott Taylor, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Perks Health. Excellent. Scott, give us a flavour for the conversations you've had here at Health over the last couple of days. Yeah, it's been great, actually. I mean, I think you know, we were in a prime position here. We've got a lot of people coming by, checking out the booth. Um, did a lot of work beforehand to make sure we're getting some prospects in. Um, been really focused on business development, but also investors and kind of you know, having discussions about what they're seeing in the market. And yeah. for us, you know, we sold to health plans and employers. So there's a bunch of you know, health plan executives here. It's been great to kind of get in front of them, have discussions, set up meetings for the future. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd yeah. um, love to yeah. learn a bit more about those problems that you're solving for these um, attendees here at health in the US market, because, uh, you know, Perks in particular have already a bit of experience in the US market and a bit of a presence, but coming from the Australian context, those problems that you're solving with Perks, uh, unpack that a little bit for me. Yeah, I think you know, in the US market, you need to really lead with how you're different. I mean, we're surrounded by different digital health solutions. And so uh, what might seem like you know, quite a differentiated or quite a new, unique solution in Australia really needs to be really clear on how it differentiates from the thousands of solutions here. I think what we've noticed, you know, particularly the problem Perks solves is you know, how do we keep patients engaged here? You know, there's hundreds of thousands of digital solutions out there in healthcare and you know, the average patient sticks to a digital solution for about five days. And for long-term chronic disease management or behavior change, we need to be delivering solutions that can be differentiated in how they engage so, the you know, patients and for us that's over 200 days of engagement and so I think really honing in and that's a, probably the big takeaway from the conference is how do we stand out in a sea of digital hair care solutions and that, that's really important when you come to a market as big as the US. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shane, uh, founder of Scripted Health Technology. Um, we offer an out-of-the-box uh, white-label telehealth solution for 
e-commerce brands looking to expand into the lucrative telemedicine prescription market or existing online clinics that are using sort of fragmented old bits of software that they're trying to manage patients and, and doctors with. Uh, or offline clinics looking to um, to tap into the online market. So we customize the user interface and patient journey, um, async, you know, uh, consult style flows, embedded video call integration, prescription management, pathology. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us about that. Give us a flavor for the conversations you've been having here at Health um, at the Australian Pavilion over the last couple of days. Yeah, I mean, uh, for us, it was a bit of a discovery trip. Um, we're really new. We're less than three months old um, in Australia and already signed our first two clients. And yeah, this trip was kind of about just meeting who's who in the zoo, uh, so to speak. So, you know, who are the pharmacy providers? Uh, are there clinician and doctor networks? Um, and how we can potentially integrate uh, with these. So if we do have brands in Australia that also want to um, offer the, the telehealth solution in the US, they can, or we can go see clients in this market as well. Yeah. And... Those types of problems that you're hearing from these discussions, how, how do you think you're placed in terms of addressing some of those and what are those, what are those problems? Yeah, I mean, uh, the US is, uh, is obviously a complicated uh, healthcare system um, with many different payers and providers, and, um, but essentially our, our solution is there for the consumer, that direct-to-consumer play, like the hims and hers or um, that sort of model. From the early feedback I've had in discussions is that, um, yeah, we're, we're actually a fairly cost um, cost-effective solution and what we offer as far as like the customization and stuff is is a lot more than what, what other solutions are on the market yeah and what are some of those you know you're in discovery mode and 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 getting a lay of the land if there was one or two kind of key takeaways you're bringing back to australia what would they be the us is complicated uh but the the size of the prize is just so much bigger um just sort of talking to people and hearing the, the sort of the volume that they you know that they throw around and i'm um, just the sheer number of businesses and stuff that you know that you know it, it could it could happen for so yeah it's uh the the size of the prize is just big, yeah. but it's it's complicated. So do your research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come over to health. Yeah. Hey, so we're Alice and Chris. We're the co-founders of Mindset Health. We create digital therapeutics for underserved mind-body conditions, primarily in uh, irritable bowel syndrome. So with an app called Nerva. So we worked with researchers, um, Dr. Peters from Monash University, to take an evidence-based gut-directed hypnotherapy protocol and deliver it via an app for 10% the price of in-person without the six to nine month waiting list. Yeah, gotcha. And you know, you've been busy here at the booth at Health as part of the Australian delegation. Give us a flavor for the types of conversations you've been having with the uh, attendees um, here in Vegas. I think something that's amazing about coming here is there's such a wide range of people. We've spoken to anyone from direct clinicians who are actually already referring our product to patients that could be a potential Nerva user to health plans who are now looking at potentially covering us and being an understanding of, you know, maybe it's a um, health economic saving for them or partnerships with like pharmaceutical companies. There's very sort of wide range and it's enabled us to sort of learn and understand who should we be speaking to more, who should we be talking about. But I think everyone's very excited about the future and the ability for us to build and impact it in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's important to really hone in on that problem to be solved with some of these technologies after having a lot of these conversations. I know you boys have had um, some experience in the US market already and scouting it out. But we're like really honing in on what, what, what are those problems that you guys are addressing? I think you touched on it with some of those metrics before. So it really depends on who you're talking to. So for, for with a patient, like they're suffering from these chronic conditions, it's really painful and they want to manage it. Um, for a provider, they really want to help their patients with IBS. There's not any good solutions out there and they want to, they feel helpless. And so they're looking for something like this. For a, an employer or a health plan, they have a, an amount of budget that they're spending on these patients and they're looking, how can we provide the best care for the least amount of money? And so we really fit into all of those buckets it's is like evidence-based care far cheaper that can help people like manage those without like putting an extra burden on the healthcare system. Yeah, got you. And lastly then, what are some of those key takeaways that you'll be walking away from health with after spending a couple of days here at the event? I think one key takeaway is the importance of real world data and being able to understand and show the impact that you can have across, especially in a US audience. Um, 
there's a lot of people that come from Australia and they come and we're bringing sort of technology and, and the user population. But every sort of health plan we've talked through this, this conference is the first question is, are you have a, do you have a US base? Do you have a US audience that's going to actually be a, represent us, a representation of our patient population? Mm. And um, that's probably one of our key takeaways. Another key takeaway is that it takes time and relationships matter a lot. So we've spent a lot of time talking and building these relationships, getting to know these people as people, when going out and having drinks with them, you know, having conversations, going and having coffee with them. Uh, less so just the pure sort of sales motion. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Talking Health Tech. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this episode with someone who might find it valuable. For more information and resources about healthcare innovation, visit TalkingHealthTech.com.